to say, welcome to the hood. You're welcome. Also, if you could maybe just... Keep it down. Anyway. Make sure if we're too noisy, call me first. Don't call the cops. Okay. okay. I'll go tell them to... Yeah. Are you ready for a show? Nick, I thought I ripped the roof off last night, man. Oh, it was... You. That is such a great audience in the yeah. first place. But the film's really lean and mean. Like, I, <laughs> it is so tight and so aggressive from frame one. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of finding that in the edit, I, I know there was a lot more you guys shot. Yeah. You've, in the past, I think you've, you've allowed the films to breathe more. Why is this one as laser focused as it is? Well, I think it depends on the comedy subgenre you're working in. You know, I think with like, like romantic comedy, for example, you can, like, it benefits sometimes from breathing more and you can have, like, the characters kind of wander a little bit more through through your cinematic landscape, I guess. I don't know what that means, but it feels, that means nothing. That actually means nothing. Uh, but I feel, I, I do think with romantic comedy, you, you're, you can let it breathe a bit more. I think with this sort of comedy, it's just like, a, I want it to be a hard, hard comedy um, that just is like a rocket ship. If you add too much breathing room, people will start to realize that the movie makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Sorry. laughs> I, one of the things I love is that you, and I think we talked a little bit about this on set and with Andrew and Brendan as well, but there's nobody in this movie mm. who ever steps back and takes any sort of responsible adult look no. at what's happening. <laughs> yeah. And that's beautiful. There's there's something great about a movie of complete lunatics. <laughs> yeah, we were... Uh, what I've learned from this movie is that you should always just have dumb characters. <laughs> Everyone should be dumb. If everyone's dumb, I mean, think about The Simpsons. Who's everyone's favorite character? Homer Simpson. Imagine if The yeah. Simpsons was five Homer Simpsons. You, oh, you, it would be like, I'm so, I know The Simpsons is the greatest TV show ever. It would be better, <laughs> you know? So I think like that like was, a, we started to realize that as we were developing the script and stuff, that if everyone's dumb, you know, it becomes, and not dumb, but like making the wrong decision. Because audiences love to watch people make, characters make the wrong decision. You, know? you also don't have any moment in this movie where it feels like it shifts into plot mode. Mm -hmm. Which is, I, I think, sometimes deadly in comedies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when third acts kind of fizzle because of it. Because now you have to get serious and wrap things up. Yeah. This thing, I, I feel like you <laughs> land all your thematic points. I think all the characters genuinely change or have something happen with them. Mm -hmm. But you do it while still getting aggressive <laughs>, laughs the entire time. Well, thank you very much. That's, that's really... Um, yeah, I mean, we wanted to just, you know, trim it down, trim it down, and get it lean. I mean, and the... The plot is just so simple, you know, and the character arcs are really simple. And if you, you know, a lot of, you know, we, we, we all wrote a zillion versions of the script. And as you, a lot of that is about trimming it down and making it, to find that simple stuff, it takes a long time to shedding stuff. So, yeah. But thanks, the, awesome. the college comedy is kind of a long tradition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I remember Harold Ramis talking at one point about feeling guilty <laughs> that he had sort of broken Started a it, generation yeah. of college kids. How many times kids. have you seen Animal House? 40? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mean you know, easily, yeah, easily 40, 40 to 50. <laughs> and and it's, I, I think he sold an idea of what frat life was like. And then in the 80s, we saw it shift back and the frats became the bad guys again. Yeah, yeah. I would say Revenge you guys fall nerds. right in the middle where they are antagonists. Yeah. But you spend just as much time getting to know them as well. Yeah, well, I have a theory of no villains. There aren't villains. I mean, in, they're in the different genres. There's obviously, you need villains. But I think in comedy, you know, you can't have a villain. And, and, and uh, like, for example, in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, like, Aldous Snow or Russell's character is not a villain. Like, he's like, right. and he would be in a different kind of movie. He would be, you know. And so I, like, kind of have learned that over the course of making uh, movies. And so in this, it was really important to us that uh, you, you understand where Zach's character is coming from and that he not just be an arch villain. Because then you don't really care about what happens to him, you know. And it's way more fun to watch people with, you know, legitimate people making the wrong decision, you know? Uh, we've seen Zach, uh, I mean, uh, we've seen Seth in the past play to his physicality and, mm. and make jokes about it and uh, certainly get comedy out of his appearance. Yes. I love that you guys use Zach this time that way, and mm -hmm. there are some phenomenal jokes about just, well, I just how want to Zach see him I just want to see him shirtless. I, I wasn't trying to get jokes out of it. I just was using, I was like, I have one moment in my life to be able to tell Zach Efron to take his shirt off as much as I want, and he has to do it. <laughs> He has to do it. There's no choice. So that is, is nothing. There's nothing. I don't think any part of that is funny. I just think he just, you know, I just could do it. No. But yeah, no, that's true. When did you um? When did you decide on Zach? Because he's not a guy who's done this before. Yeah. And I and I seriously, I think you changed my opinion of him <laughs> with the film. It's okay. it. You get something out of him I haven't seen yet on mm -hmm. film. Um, he was attached. It, this movie originated with so uh, Andrew Cohen and Brendan O'Brien wrote this wrote the script and they they um. 
pitched it to Seth and Evan and Weave, James Weaver uh, as producers and said, we, all we know is we want Zach Efron. So they, wow. they, it was their uh, initial idea. And then when Evan called me about it, um, uh, he told me, and I was like, that's hysterical. I mean, I'd seen him in 17 again, which was, and he was really charming and funny in that, yeah. you know. But there's like, I just, I don't know, you just have an instinct, you know, and he just, I could just tell that he had some darkness there that could be fun to exploit. He, he and Franco have a really interesting dynamic together. And, and Dave is a guy who I think each film that oh, we yeah. see him in. I'll also say that there's nothing darker than a guy smiling, like being like, don't mess with us, yeah. like that. And, and like, I knew he could do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but they, the, the, uh, the two of them, I think Dave's come on really strong in the last oh, few years to, as well. So funny, yeah. And so their chemistry, it, uh, it seems like as soon as you put them together, you, you must have known something special was, was happening. Yeah, as soon, I mean, I've, you know, I've loved Dave, I saw, I, mean, I remember the first time I, but like in Jump Street, obviously, he's so funny. Um, but he has such a weird, funny comic energy. Because he's, he's also obviously very good looking, but then he has an off-kilter Franco-ness that's like, that's, that's awesome, you know? And uh, yeah, as soon as we started shooting with the two of them, they just have a really great dynamic. Um, and uh, Franco, he always describes his character as the smartest of the dumb guys. He's probably the smartest character in the movie. I guess maybe which Lisa, is, Lisa Kudrow. Is yeah, <laughs> Lisa Kudrow. I guess is the smartest character in the movie. And then no, the baby maybe. We yeah. don't know about that. No, the baby has stupid genes. The baby's <laughs> and I, from 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 the characters. I'm not not. <laughs> and hats off, man. I, I the the work you do with the baby. Yeah. It's I know ninety percent of that is is there's a, a lot of hoping that it will pay off and, that and in the casting and there's two two baby twins obviously and they just I th I went in thinking we prepping like gesticulating jaw dolls and stuff you know what I mean like we had the whole like thing set up for that and they were just super mellow babies they never cried there was a scene that I was going to shoot where I needed the baby to cry um uh and uh we couldn't get the baby to cry like we just couldn't we tried the dad literally tried to like took gave her her favorite toy and then took it away and she still didn't cry <laughs> and I, so I, then I was like let's stop torturing this baby but yeah they those babies were just awesome um, but there's there's a, a sort of a leap of faith involved in knowing that some of your comic moments oh, yeah. uh, are going to hinge on that. Um, yeah, well, you, I kind of like would shoot just long takes on them, and then you just know you'll hopefully get something, you right. know, and then and then use, you know, and the, and the, but they did provide amazing moments, like when Seth, Seth and Rose are fighting, that baby did get disturbed. Like I was shooting a master and a shot on the baby at the same time, and the baby was like looking back and forth, and then went like that, and it was like she was like her parents were fighting. It was, it was actually uh, sad. Um, I don't think I can call Rose Byrne a secret weapon anymore because <laughs> yeah. at this point, yeah, it's pretty, the secret's bomb. out. She's yeah. kind of amazing, yeah. and uh, and she's got chops to spare in this film. Mm -hmm. I think one of the best reaction shots in the movie is her, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. walking through the party. Yeah. And it's, um, with her and with Seth, mm -hmm. uh, sort of playing their chemistry, mm -hmm. um, you you do such a lovely job of establishing them quickly. Uh, how how quickly did that come together in terms of chemistry watching them work? Oh, instantly. They were, yeah, they were just uh, instantly, like, they f find each other delightful, you know? And you, so you feel that chemistry coming through. You, these, it seems like a couple that really loves each other because they actually did crack each other up. And, like, you know, a lot of scenes, there <laughs> were a lot of takes ruined uh, uh, re between them making each other laugh, which, was, which is, like, uh, really good because you have and and we put some of it in it you know when a, when a character when an actor is legitimately laughing it's a great way to just show the joy of that character you know so um, but it, yeah their chemistry was instantaneous and she's just hysterical she'll she's I, she's Meryl Streep I think you know? I am very excited for people to get a look at it and yeah. I can't believe you got away with that in an R dude <laughs> it feels Wait, someone else said that so what is what's what's what could go to NC seventeen it, it's not that I I think you could tip it over with any one thing yeah. it's the overall cumulative effect of by the end of the movie you're like I feel like I just sat through something insane like genuinely yeah so it does yeah. it feels like you got away with something oh good and I love that good that's awesome sir thank, thank you, you so much cool thanks Drew very good to see you nice to see you too I have a darkness inside of me and you will see it dude we missed the air bag more breaking entertainment news and more follow at hitfix on twitter or visit hitfix.com